As Michigan State basketball grew over the years, better players made better teams. Better teams led to national prominence. However, there was one aspect of Spartan basketball that remained the same. Well, it reminds me of a cracker box. It was a jogging barn. The uh, bleachers were never in. Uh, the baskets were never up in the spring. Some of them looked around and wondered, where's the rodeo? If you want to call it a barn, it was a grand old barn for many, many years. Whether the person who designed Jenison Fieldhouse intended it to become the loudest venue in all of college basketball, we don't know for sure. What is certain is that the fans were more a part of the game there than in any other arena in the country. In Jenison, Irvin Johnson said that it made the difference in a number of games when he was here for two years. And I uh, wouldn't have wanted to play in Breslin. That, to him, was home. But uh, those people who were in Jenison when it was alive will never forget it. In the end, Frederick Cowell's Jenison Gymnasium and Fieldhouse was more than ready to pass the torch to a more up-to-date and state-of-the-art facility. But in its 49 years as the home of Michigan State basketball, Spartan players and coaches alike all say the same thing. There was no better place to play. The only problem was, it wasn't only the basketball team that felt that way. When, when you consider that that building, uh, basketball, boxing, wrestling, swimming, track, fencing, gymnastics, uh, this was the building on campus for, for athletics. Now each has its own individual area, but back then uh, it was the home to almost everybody. You know, it's funny because the day before the game, all the bleachers would be out of there and the place was like a big barn and, and people would be running around the track in there, the professors and stuff. And, and so it was a totally different building when they, when they brought in the bleachers and, and the fans were in there. And... Because of Jenison's versatility, the basketball team wasn't always the top priority. Well, they had a lot of different floors. They had raised floor, which is like the one at Minnesota and you used to sit below it. Uh, you'd have to climb up to get onto it. Uh, they had basically a dirt floor for a long time. They used to have football practice in there. We had a portable floor, a huge one. It was uh, set up and looked like a stage and made it very attractive and when the bleachers were in. But when I was coaching one time, uh, you sat on the benches below the floor, much like Minnesota. Not as, uh, not as high a floor as the Minnesota it was, but uh, I, you'd... Uh, you, you could rest your arms on the floor, and then I got upset one game and slammed my fist against the floor and broke my hand. The problem with the portable floor, besides the occasional broken bone, was the word portable. In the off-season, when the floor was gone and recruits came to look at the arena, to say it wasn't the most attractive of facilities would be an understatement. I would bring kids in and visits and they could not believe we played there so it was a real detriment to recruiting. We would always show them a uh, film of the place uh, filled and uh, you know I, I always said until we moved into Breslin everything was positive about Michigan State except we had to apologize for Jenison Fieldhouse. But it was a great place to play and a lot of tradition when it was filled for game times. But uh, a lot of times it wasn't full and it was a very, very difficult place to recruit to. Uh, if you brought a prospect in and it wasn't a game, they thought it was a jogging bar. Uh, Gus Kanakis used to say that he tried not to bring players into Jenison Fieldhouse. And uh, when Judd Heathcote was hired, the athletic director, Joe Kearney, brought him to Jenison and, and Judd, in his inimitable way, said, geez, Joe, we had a better place than this at Montana. And uh, Joe Kearney says, well, gee, Judd, I certainly hope so. So uh, it wasn't really the big time environment at that point, but when you had an Irvin Johnson or a Scott Skiles, uh, there was no place better to play basketball. In the days when Michigan State basketball called Demonstration Hall home, only a few thousand fans were able to see each game. But with the advent of Jenison, figuring out just how many people the place could hold was a continual problem. From the arena's first game in January of 1940 
where just 6,700 fans saw MSC beat Tennessee to a 1948 game with Kentucky when 15,384 people walked through the turnstiles. Officials knew they had a bit of a problem. Well, I don't know how they ever got 15,000 in place. I, I would have hated to be there the day there was a cigarette butt catch on fire, but uh, the fire marshals came in and uh, they chopped the seating capacity down and then they built it up, they put some more doors in it and finally got it back up to 10,004. With the large number and the tight quarters, it became clear that Michigan State was sitting on what potentially could be the biggest home court advantage in college basketball. To attend a game was to be part of the game. The fans are so close to the floor. Uh, it's packed in and the acoustics are just incredible. You, you, you couldn't even hear the whistle blow. When they were calling fouls or traveling, you kept playing because you really couldn't hear a whistle. You had to wait till the ref you know, started waving you off before you stopped. Sold out game, first thing you walk in, you just sense the aroma, popcorn popping. It, it just had a feel that something big was happening. Uh, and it was loud. When that place was packed, it was as loud as anywhere. Louder than Breslin Center. I don't think whoever uh, the architect was understood acoustics. It was a very intimate place. You were right on top of the floor. Uh, if you were on the sides, of balcony had a little overhang to it, came over, and, and uh, it, it just, the sound reverberated in a way that it doesn't at Breslin Center. If the cramped quarters of the field house were beneficial for the team's success, the media's comfort level was a different story. It was a trip. We were up in a kind of a overhang, and you had to take a series of stairs up there. And I remember the worst part used to be if you ever were caught in the stairway during the national anthem, you would have to stand all crouched over until the thing got done, and you just hoped the singer was fast that day. I know some engineers back at that time when the equipment was heavy that you had to carry up, they would pause a couple of times walking up the stairs and they were sweating by the time they got everything up in the booth. And then you were really isolated from everything else, but you were right on top of the crowd, right on top of the ball game. It was a great, great place to broadcast. In just under a half a century of basketball at Jenison Fieldhouse, the Spartans won 383 games and were victorious 67% of the time. To those who were there watching, the intimacy of the old field house was part of its allure. And to those who were down on the court, Jenison's strength was in that extra jolt of emotion it provided the Spartans every game they played. It was small, and I know they, you know, the Breslin Center's beautiful, it's a state-of-the-art facility and all that, but, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have traded Jenison for anything.